and everybody's counting. One, two, three, four, five, seven. One, three, got it. Five, tight, seven. Hit one, hit three, hit got it. Five, push seven. One, got it. Three, good. Five, good. Seven, breathe. One, two, three, got it. Five, seven, push. One, hit three, hit it. Five, hit seven, hit one, two, three, push seven. Alright, yeah, that's not perfect, so let's do that one again. Care. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, What is your personal definition on cheerleading? It's one of the most intensive sports that's completely underrated. With this sport, it's the most intimate you could be with your team. I mean, literally rely on somebody to catch you from a 20 foot descending fall is pretty intimate. And I think with that, you have to be, you feed off each other more because you're so close. The two minutes and 30 seconds or two minutes and 15 seconds, whichever way you go, uh, you have to be able to work out. It's tiring. You know, and now they're like progressing with Stunt the Sport, um, which makes it even that much more difficult. So it's definitely evolved within the past 10 years from just being like a novelty activity to a full blown sport. Today we need to really focus on pyramid. There's some changes. There are some changes in the pyramid that I think will make it more stable and just better in general. I think the last pyramid was really fast and I think there was a lot of movement in it. Like the flip yeah. section to the arabesques, I think were always really a struggle for us. Mm -hmm. And then when you dip and you turn to a full heel stretch, that's like the movement that you're doing. You're rotating your body a quarter while pulling one leg up off the ground and the momentum and the bracer, you're letting go with one hand. It's just so much change that happens when you push that full heel stretch and it tends to bobble and be heavy because you're tired from basing a whole pyramid <laughs> and then you go in and have to push this full heel stretch with no assistance and it's just yeah. like didn't hit one time on the mat. You know? Not once. Yeah, not, not like perfectly. Once did that heel stretch hit. And in general, like we've been performing this routine constantly with 15. We now have 16. My name is Miguel Vizcarra. I am currently a sophomore. I've been cheering for a year, a little bit over a year. This girl, Peyton Moody, she hurt her leg and they needed somebody in for a week and they called me and then I based my, for my first time. And um, I guess I did good, that's why I stayed. <laughs> and so what that means is the routine's gonna shift. It makes every one of your spots more competitive. If a stunt isn't hitting, we have to change it. We can't have bobbles on that mat. Realize that your spot, although on this team, is not jeopardized right now, your place in your stunt is constantly on the line. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. One, three, five, seven, eight. One, three, five, hit, seven, eight. One, two, dip, fall. I don't think people realize it, but like it's hard for people to understand what you need to do during a routine. You need to like build up the energy or it's really hard to like do anything. But it's very nerve wracking when you're going in front of all your like everyone like know. peers. It's different. It's hard because mm -hmm. now you're being judged by people that you know and see every day. Yeah. Whereas like competition it's like you know exactly what they want to see, you yeah. know exactly what they want to, they want. 
These are a bunch of friends that don't know anything about cheer. They just think this is like a cool flip. The second performance was far better than the first. Yeah, the, the first rally, the music cut out during our dance, and people were confused of what was going on, and we were just saying count. First one, <laughs> I think it was a little chaotic for us, and we didn't do the best. What is the difference between performing at a school event versus performing at a competition? At a school event, I feel like you're more in front of your friends, the people you talk to the most, and the people you hang out with like on the daily and they get to go off the mat and say whatever they want after you perform. It's really important to show your peers what you're up to. I think they don't get to see the, the elite stuff we do outside of sideline cheer. And so that's probably more scary for you guys than doing anything at competition where you don't know anybody. Being right in front of your peers like that is a lot of pressure. You guys, stop. My flyers, get your legs straight, point your toes, and be tight. Not the way to do that. Everybody do their job. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. One, two, three, five, seven, eight. Cut one, two, hit three, four, shimmy five, grab seven, eight. One, two, three, seven, eight. One, two, three, five, seven, eight. One, two, three, down five, seven, eight. One, two, three. Three, drop five, seven, eight, one. Three, five, seven, eight, good. Good job, guys. Go get water. People just like don't see like the dedication because they always see like our performances and by then it's hopefully the routine is perfect, but they don't see like all the falls and all the mistakes that we made for practice. But it's a lot of hard work. And you okay, Annie? It's excruciating, like painful sometimes. Like people get injured, people, never cheer again because of it. Like you just, you don't see what's behind the pom-pom. Five, six, seven, eight. Travis! We can summer run, prepare for war. No, please start over. Okay, shake now. Same thing. Trojan summer run, prepare for war. And we need to focus on what's at stake here. This is a huge competition, it's a huge deal. This is a great, this is your opportunity, this is your chance as a team. Like this is it. If there's a team that's gonna do it, it's your team.
<laughs> oh my god, that was so close to my phone. <laughs> Good morning, Peyton. Good morning. <laughs> this is Bella. Do it your hair. We got tiny in the mirror. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Ty. <laughs> I don't know why she's wearing this shirt. <laughs> Zoom in on it. <laughs> Take it off. Hi, Mary. Don't trip. I said, one, what time should we start doing this wedding? Well, however long it takes. Well, it's 9 a.m. and everyone still needs straight hair. We're doing straight hair, right? Good morning! Good morning! Are you guys excited for comp? I'm excited. You look beautiful. I know. Are you excited for comp? We're vlogging. Are you excited for comp? So excited for comp. <laughs> Me too. Look, they're watching Hold. Shelby! <laughs> Good morning. Are you excited for comp day? Okay. <laughs> She's not excited. So tell me what you're doing right now. I'm getting ready for competition. Oh my god. Did you sleep well? No. Me neither. Woo! Woo! Good morning. Are you excited for comp? No, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> so how are we feeling about today? Hmm? How are we feeling about today? Okay. I think you guys will have no problem taking from the championship, but I'm really, we have like eight teams that we're against that are actually really, really hard. And so if we do, if we want grand championship, we gotta be perfect. Yeah. Super excited. Still have the side of nervous, yeah. like, vomit, but, you know, that's to be expected. And that's yeah. a lot just yeah. excitement and stuff. But I'm really, 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 really happy. I think everybody is in a really good space mentally. Yeah. And I'm just excited to get down there. Yeah. Hi, Luma, where are you going? Straight to the top, and I'm taking all my trumpets. Woo! And one, two, three. Stand up. Aggressive. So much better. One, two, three, four, five, five, seven, eight, one, two, three, yep, five, eight, seven, eight, one, eight, three, three, five, 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 seven, one, five, three, got it, okay, five, stop, 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 I want to fix this. Start with, um, what's the hardest thing about being a cheerleader? Okay. I tell. I think the hardest thing would be to keep your mind with it because it's more of a mental thing to do. If you have to keep like your attitude up, your confidence, your willingness. Can I take the thread? No, Caitlin is. Why? Because she's my navigation. Mommy! Um, can you start the conversation? She's the caravan? She's the fastest. Well, Ty drives the slowest. I drive fast, so I don't know about y'all. You should lead it. You think I should lead yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Oh, see, I go step by step. Hannah, I can see you in the mirror. Are you hot, Hannah? Sorry. If you guys are hot, the windows can go. You're right. You're around. Yeah. Are we going?
like a blur, right? Yeah. It's a blur. It's like being numb. Yeah. You're like numb to everything. Like I'm not even scared. Right when that music starts, I am on an autopilot. Yeah. Of, like do the routine, get out of there, do it well. Yeah. Because we practice so much that it's like we don't need to. You just like go on. You don't need to think about it. It's like the most exciting thing ever. You get the most adrenaline ever, but you also get really nervous but it mostly just pumps you up and gets you excited and you're ready to go. So with cheer, everybody is choreographed into routine and there's no, there's no like second string like football has. There's no backup. There's just who you have on the mat is what you work with. And if one stunt group can't hit something, you just, you end up, you can't have a weak link, essentially. When you drop a stunt, that means either your flyer falls or your base messes a grip or your back spot doesn't catch and your stunt goes down. You could go from first place to last for one stunt fall. what you've been like preparing for. so easy just to throw our people up. It's so easy to just do everything we do. But really it takes... It takes um, out of us 100% uh, of our effort and if one person doesn't give their 100% then it's all gonna fall. coaching when I was a senior in high school. So, eight years. She's um, completely changed the whole program and she pushes all of us to like, like me and Jalen were here freshman year and I don't think I ever thought I would be as far as I am today. I coached Pinnacle Panthers for how long? Four or five years. And then I went to an all-star team. So, you're gonna grab. Clean, one, grab, three, hit, five, up, seven, one, hit, three, hold, five, they're gonna dip seven, 
on the seventh day dippy for a clean at the top. Oh. I want your leg to like extend higher. Why do you think Pet Limit got so strong in their cheer program with them last year? I think it's mostly on Tyler because like she really does pour her heart and soul into like everything that has to be cheer related here. And she really did grow up the pro the pro the program. <laughs> <laughs> we just like help her like keep the program going by like participating. It's like you're shrugging to a full dropping, moving, dipping, and hitting a half. And now, we would like to recognize the coaches who are nominated for Coach of the Year. The nominees for this session, Rosanna Soria. It's so hard to like even put into words. She's pushed us like beyond what any of us thought we could ever be. She pushes us far yeah. further than we could ever think. Yeah, yeah we would go. she's like done so much for us. It's just so kind much. of like I feel like we owe her to kind of like do the best we can for her. She I, literally sleeps, eats, <laughs> like, yeah, she's cheer. Sleeps, like, yeah, I think we can all say we owe a lot to her and respect her. Yeah, a lot. And first place in the intermediate non tumbling division goes to. In the eight years that I've been coaching, I've learned so much. I, I just I've seen successful things in programs, and I've seen unsuccessful things in programs. And for Petaluma, it was an opportunity to create this vision that I had, and it was an opportunity to to build a program that I thought was going to be successful. Let's see it. We can get a zoom in on it. Leah, let me see yours. Focus. You got rings? Yeah. yeah. No way! They're sparkling too. Yeah. <laughs> Holy sh! And then, <laughs> yeah, and they say champions on the back. So basically, like that day zero, they come in and we want you to do like a design just for you with the instructor. And then, then day one. Believe in themselves. Having confidence and every motion that you're doing leaves no room for doubt. When you doubt, you hesitate. When you hesitate, you miss a step. You miss a count. Constantly working on your skill and your craft and you should always want to try to be better and try to do better. I would assume that they take away from here, but yeah, they don't. I got like a hot Super duper thankful. And that 15 hour car ride with you sitting next to me really let me see your aura. And out of everyone under the sun, you remind me so much of my 16 year old youth coach that I came in contact with at uh, Pendleton Panther. 
years. So that's what I'm <laughs> um, so I see nothing but greatness. Promise. Thank you. Thank you. Cheer gives you this ability to work on to work on the people that you work with a lot more than any other sport does. It gives you opportunities to create leaders and ambassadors and to create strong minded people that will later impact our community and I think for me with cheer, with coaching, it's just the ability to impact your guys' lives as a big picture. We can work on being a great athlete, but being a great person is so much more important and I think the older I got, the more I valued working on that aspect of coaching. When you help build a great person and you help somebody find themselves, they will in turn become better athletes. So and it just it just naturally had this effect that was so positive. So I think that's why I continue to do it because every day I coach I find some other way to just reach the youth. Oh, hold on one second, okay? I have to eat. Huh? Yeah? Just edit that out. Okay.